Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. She is big, she is bad, she is beautiful, she is big valley antiques. That's right, you guys. We are back and I am super excited to get back inside, see what we can't find. It's always a good time here. I really enjoy it. There is an amazing variety of items. Now, before we get inside, I'd like to try something new. That's right, we're trying something new. I'm gonna put my email address right down here. It is simply thecultofvintage at yahoo.com. What we're gonna try is this. I get a lot of emails or comments saying, I wish that you had gotten that. If you're back in the area, can you get that for me? Um, it's a little difficult to do that because I feel like if I do it for one person, then I, I feel like I, it's only fair to do it for everybody. And I can't possibly do that um, because sometimes I drive up to two hours to bring new places, to keep it fresh, to not always be redundant and going to the same places over and over and over and over and over again. So what we're gonna try to do, and I've actually done this successfully in the past, um, people have reached out to me and said, hey, if you ever find this item, could you get it for me? And I have successfully done that in the past several times. So what I am offering is, I guess you could say it's kind of like a personal shopper. Um, if you are actively looking for something, go ahead, again, email me at thecultofvintage at yahoo.com. Let me know in the subject matter. So if you're looking for I'm going to say a black swung vase, put black swung, looking for black swung vase in the subject matter. Let me know in the body of the email if there's a specific brand, if there are specific item details to keep an eye out for. And then also, and most importantly, let me know what you're willing to spend on that item. Putting the item in the subject matter is going to be one of the most, is the one of the two most important things because it will be able to stick in my head that I need to look for a specific item. But when I go back to search it, I'm going to search in the subject to pull that email back up. The second most important thing is please let me know how much you're willing to spend on an item. That way, if I'm out and about and I find it and it's already at what you're willing to spend, chances are I'm not gonna be able to get it. I've gotta have a little bit of wiggle room to be able to do this successfully. It's a business at the end of the day, so I'm just being forthright with you. Um, we're going to try it out and see how it goes. <laughs> Could be a recipe for disaster, and if it turns into a disaster, I'll let you know. <laughs> Hopefully not too much, but we're going to get inside here, guys, see what we can't find. Um, we're going to start upstairs at the very end, which is typically where I conclude the video. Um, I want to start out fresh up there and see what we can't find so let's get inside okay so i am on the second floor at the very end and the reason i've chosen to do it this way is because usually by the time i'm at this point i have purchased a lot and i'm just tired um, i can spend up to two to three hours in big valley antiques and a lot of it is because i'm obviously filming so i'm a little bit slower and by the time i get here there may be things that i see and i'm just like i'm done and i want to go so I kind of want to maybe feature these vendors a little bit more than what I have in the past. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, guys, here we go. You are seeing a whole lot of plush there in the center. What we came in here, of course, is for the glass. Now, I do see a sales sign here. We've got red and green dots. So everything, it seems, is 25% off. But we definitely want to keep our eye out for the red at 30 and green, even better, at 50% off. Now, we do see some Westmoreland. This is the Blue Mist. Uh, it is hand-painted, $16, a little covered candy dish. I've done very well um, with the Westmoreland, the Mist colors, Westmoreland does call their satin glass mist and the variety of colors that they made. Good condition. At $16, I do decide I'm going to go ahead and set that one down. Um, you know, it's interesting being from Pennsylvania, Westmoreland being in Pennsylvania. I see so much of it, so I have a tendency to kind of pass it by. But again, as I said, it has done very well for me in the past. 
This is a really interesting piece. It is a terracotta uh, that we are seeing here, or almost an earthenware uh, figural piece. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. They seem to be gossipy. Um, I do really enjoy the subject matter, but without a signature or manufacturer on there, I do elect to leave it behind. This guy's pretty gosh darn amazing. This glass ram. Again, speaking of subject matter, I'm really digging that. And I knocked that little boy figurine over. Don't worry. He didn't break. Thankfully, almost does not count. <laughs> now, the next piece that I'm going to pick up, I have seen here before. I love this. Um, it's obviously in a clear glass. I'm loving this pattern. There is some straw marks on it. Now, it is priced, I think, reasonably at $25. Um, I decide I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I've seen this piece before, and like I said earlier, I usually pass it by because I'm like, I've had, I have enough. But then, upon closer inspection, the bottom is pretty chipped up. Dang it. I left it behind. Not at 25. I just couldn't warrant it. Uh, here we've got a booth that focuses almost exclusively on depression uh, era glass. And I was pointing to the reference book that they have down below. I think that's pretty gosh darn cool. Um, now here we've got what I believe is an Indiana um, diamond point glass compo. I don't know if that's actually a depression era. I could be wrong. Um, the color on it is spot on. Uh, for that classic depression era pink. We do have some yellow uh, or marigold if you prefer. We have some green. And then up top, I'm seeing some pre-depression era on the blue opalescent. Um, unfortunately, they are priced at retail, so I couldn't get them. Uh, Jefferson pattern here. It's sad I love those. Moving on, we are seeing some nesting dolls, and I did see a little Santa here. He is just a single. There's nobody else inside of him. $4, he's cute, but at being a single nesting doll, I don't really see the feasibility in that piece. We've got $12 on this one. Again, unfortunately, it is a single. Then I am seeing complete sets, and they were priced you know, at $30, $30 and up. I do like this one. It's matte. It's not um, shellacked or glossed. Um, that was interesting. Wasn't really digging the glitter on it. it. It gave it too much of a contemporary feel. So cool to see, but just not what we are looking for. But we're going to try to spot some more stuff. Now, I have been in this booth before. I wasn't seeing a lot of turnover, um, but I did spot this blue with a black rim ruffle vase here. I think it's pretty. I love the color combination on this one. It does appear to be a cased glass when I picked it up. $25. Um, and there is 30% off of that. So, you know, what is that? Like $7.50 off. I would have wanted to get this one a little bit lower, but it's got some great art deco feels to it. Again, we are now at the back wall. I have found some really nice stuff um, in this booth before or display wall vendor. <laughs> now here we do have some safety pin art, you know, very popular in the 70s and 80s. I've never found a tree before. It is priced at $21. Now the star is attached, but it's a little loose. You kind of saw it weave down there a little bit. Good condition, 21 bucks. Uh, star i'm gonna leave it i you know i find a lot of safety pin art in the thrift stores so i've never spent 21 dollars on a piece though i will say that i've done well with the safety pin art and i think the tree is an unusual subject matter but i just didn't i didn't want to take the risk at 21 dollars um that would have been an investment and i think definitely would have done better closer to the holidays though oh my goodness how many months it's like three months away that's crazy here we've got a little elf teapot. He's obviously missing his lid. I think he might be missing more than just his lid. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, we do have a chip here on the spout. Without that lid, without with the chip on the spout, um, I do decide to go ahead and leave him behind. I could have lived with the chip or the missing lid had there not been the other. Got a set of little tea bag holders here. It is $19. They're in really good condition, but I uh, not at 19 Not for us. I think reasonable, especially for a set of three. Spotting some little ceramic figurines down here. These are Walt Disney. Obviously, they are the seven dwarves. They're stamped Disney. And then I look at it and I'm like, whoa, soulless sleepy. <laughs> 
I'm like, but are you really? We've got some little diamond pottery here based on the Rempel squeaker sculpts. You've seen these plenty before, so have I, and that's why I left them behind. Uh, just not excited. You thought I missed them, didn't you? And I almost did. But here we've got a set of mercury glass candles, and it does. it is a four-piece set, so the vendor has decided to sell the candles and the candlesticks for $26. i got to be honest with you. I was not digging the ruby with the silver overlay. It's not my favorite color combination, to be honest with you. That $26 would have been in the candles. Um, the candlesticks are okay, but I will say that the mercury glass candles appeared to be in excellent condition. So we have that sign again. So we have obviously moved on and this is a different vendor now there is 30 percent off of everything throughout um, i have been at this booth before but what i am seeing is new items in the booth first up i absolutely love this little pumpkin patch here with the happy halloween on it and it's priced at 300 dollars. so <laughs> i said well not for us not for us even with the 90 dollars off now here we are seeing some antique paper mache or paper pulp, I think is more specifically. Uh, 125 on the little nut cup there. We do have some candy containers back here. Um, that one is priced at 180, 179. I love this guy here in the back. He's super stylized. Um, but unfortunately, again, even with the 30% off at 225, it's just it's simply not where I, I would be able to make any money on it. And then we see the black cat, and that is a fence post. He's kind of creeping over. Um, these ones go for some insane amounts of money. Um, this one is at 300 and I will tell you this, those things go for more. Um, and there is 30% off. It's, it is frustrating as a reseller. You find such amazing items, especially Halloween, and you're like, I can't afford this for resale. Yeah, that's 300 That one, honestly, I think that's a little high. If I'm going to be honest with you, that is a German pressed uh, or embossed um, Halloween die cut. They made a number of those. I only have the pleasure of owning a black cat. Um, but that, you know, they do go for some good money. But at 200 after the 30% off, that, that's a little, it's a little high. But hey, you never know. Somebody walks in there and that's the piece that they're looking for. And that's the piece that they're needing to complete their collection. Then what's $200, you know? Lots of different blow molds. We've got the die cuts. There's just a little bit, well, there's a lot of the blow molds and a little bit of everything else in the vendor's booth. I always love coming in here. It's charming. It's whimsical. I think the aesthetics, the vibe, they're just great. We even have some contemporary ones there with Jack and Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. It is a fun booth to look at. Um, again, the prices aren't for us for resale, but I mean, hey, I am a collector too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we do have some Pyrex in there. You know, Enamor Amy was kind enough to point out a very rare piece of Pyrex. Um, unfortunately, the vendor knows what they had and they priced it accordingly. One of my favorite booths here at Big Valley Antiques. And check it out. We've got some vintage plush here. Um, and we've got a knockoff Rushton at only $12. Now, this face mold, it seems that this wool in company, he does have his original hand tag, um, just straight up took the Rushton chubby tubby cubby uh, mold and decided to make their own teddy bear with it. Oh, wool, no. Okay. Excellent condition. He's not frayed. He's not coming apart. There's no stains on him. Um, this little bear here, he's more of like a circus prize. I think he's cute. Um, I think somebody definitely would appreciate it. We've got a little talking Mr. Ed here. Um, he is priced at only $22. However, and I will show you here in just a moment, um, or you probably noticed it it says string pulled on um broken this is what it is saying so somebody pulled that that cord a little too much uh vendor decided to safety pin it on there that way it didn't get caught or pulled even more so we're definitely going to get this little cutie he's adorable you know we've got some franciscan rose okay um <laughs> shady pretty glass beautiful setup loving this shell little wind chime there. I would feel so uncomfortable putting that on the exterior, but I do think it's more of an interior decor piece. 
We're going to take our time, just check things out. We've got a beautiful bud vase here. I do spot a little pixie. I'm loving the color, the black and the white. I've never found one in a black and white before. This is a Holland mold, so it is a hobbyist piece. He's priced at $15, very reasonable for a collector. I probably would have snatched him up if he was like 10 or under. Uh, gorgeous, a little, it looks to be Victorian era, pardon me, not Victorian, early 1900 era uh, satin glass with some hand painted or hand enameled uh, herring or storks on there. Paint was in really good condition. The price just wasn't where I needed it to be. Those can be a tough sell. We do have a mix of both uh, mid-century and antique glass up here. Always fun to see. Spotting some Benton there, and we're going to move on. This was super charming. It is a 3D cookie and cake decorator set. You guys, the cutters in this were like the shape. Look at that. There's even a little satin piping bag that's still included in there. It looks like it was never used, but you cut out the shapes, almost like a gingerbread house, and then you kind of like assemble them obviously you're going to use your icing to kind of bind them together original packaging price that twenty dollars um good for a collector but yet again yet again not where we need it to be now this is the vendor that had all of the blow molds i do believe they have a separate space here. I've seen this piece before. It's priced at $100. However, there is 30% off. This is the Peking Santa. I mean, the packaging alone, Peking Santa. <laughs> he is a blow mold Santa head. It is by Empire. Um, he does come with a post, which is included. I'm showing you here. So you can kind of stake him into the ground and have him peeking out of your bushes because nothing says Merry Christmas like a Peking Santa. Ho, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to bust them out of the packaging here. I want to inspect them a little bit closer. We obviously have some paint rub on him. At this point, I don't think that he is going to be an exterior piece. He's obviously going to be something that you'd want to keep on the inside. So I'm going to live with that paint rub. And we are going to go ahead and pick him up. I think there's definitely some value on him. Um, the aesthetic is really strong. Kind of torn as to whether that's a keep or a sell. If I'm being honest, 15% off everything. And I found one of my favorite things of this adventure today. It is this 1930 slash 31 Montgomery award catalog. Now there are some obvious signs of wear, but let me tell you what, and you are going to see the interior towards the end of the video. Oh, you guys wait till you see it. I'm so happy. I got that. Now, this is interesting. This is PY for Yukago. This is the um, shoe fly set. It's a variety of pieces. Here we're seeing, obviously, the creamer and the salt and pepper shakers. There's some pretty heavy crazing on this. Um, so, in my opinion, uh, this appears that, the, especially the creamer, there was water that had sat in there and it created that kind of like stained crazing. Um, again, that's usually sitting water. So I unfortunately, given those condition issues, I did decide to leave this piece behind. I think $34 for the three piece set, especially for a collector who doesn't mind the crazing, that is a phenomenal deal. Um, you can pay 40 to 50 just for the creamer by itself. Now I'm absolutely personally really loving this piece. Um, it's done in the style of Mycin or Mycene. They have it labeled as Dresden. I don't believe that it actually is Dresden. Dresden was pretty good about labeling their items. I'm inspecting it for any kind of damage. I'm not seeing the damage on this piece. Um, I, at $14, I think it's a great deal for a collector. I was really debating it for my personal self, but I've got a lot of French porcelain, um, done again in the Meissen or the Dresden style. And without that marking, I do decide to go ahead and leave it behind. I do have a, a strong feeling that it is more of a Japan piece though. I will say it's done very well for a Japan piece. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, this vendor has got some beautiful things and something that we found is this cased glass. Now it does appear to be black glass upon a first inspection. And I'm like, but are you sure not? Look at that, that beautiful, deep, deep purple. So we, we obviously have a very saturated amethyst glass. It's showing very well. Um, I think it is beautiful. I love the subject matter. There's no damage. Um, and at 15 bucks, they decide to go ahead and pick it up. 
look at that shine on it. I mean, imagine sitting that in a windowsill and just that deep violet color. Oh my goodness. All right, guys, we have some last minute finds here. I did find this little um, May squeaker. He's antique Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Really good condition. There's no rips or tears on him, though he does have some staining, but I look past that. And look at this adorable little violin. <gasps> Stop it. I think it is so charming and cute. It's got the bow. The details are excellent on it. So I decide that I'm going to go ahead and pick these guys up last minute. And that is it, you guys. We're going to wrap it up outside. Well, you know, not every day can be an amazing day. I don't know. Maybe I guess the last time we were here, we just cleaned them out and they haven't had time to restock. We're going to go with that story. Yeah. I mean, hey, we got out. We did find some stuff. I love, of course, the Santa hat. I'm very excited about the Montgomery Ward catalog. Um, I'm excited to see how that does. I really want to check inside uh, some of those advertisements. You know what? I'll go ahead and I will um, insert some video footage of the actual advertisements so you guys can. Alrighty guys, as promised, we are going to check out the interior of the Montgomery Ward catalog. Now there is some obvious damage wear there on the spine, though it is still nice and tight on the interior. Look at the fashions. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, many of you are probably familiar, especially when it comes to antique ephemera. Um, most, the vast majority of catalogs or ephemera did not actually use photos, but they actually used artisans to draw the product. I mean, can you imagine the army of artisans that it would take to make an entire catalog? And as you are seeing, this catalog is just chock full of images we are now obviously, oh, she's got legs and she knows how to use them, folks. Our finest, mer-sized. <laughs> oh my goodness. Quality. Look at her. Three weights, your choice, and 95 cents a pair. Oh, these were a little bit fancier at $1.25. Hmm. Oh, buck fifty, dollar seventy-five. Oh, ladies, watch out. We got the men in the long john or fellas. I mean, hey, what of we got the men in their long johns there. Those things look so incredibly hot. Can't imagine wearing a full body wool suit. I don't, you know, it's a, little, a little scratchy, you know what I'm saying? The young men here in their outerwear. Look at the fashions. Just Again, the artistry behind this. We have the kids' toys here. Obviously, the cars, the trucks, the air rifles. You'll shoot your eye out. Love it. Now, a lot of the imagery is in a black and white or a sepia. But we do have some color imaging. I love the synthetics that you can buy here. The Jolly Reeds. Yes, you did see the Christmas. Don't worry, we're going to get to it. Now, these do appear to be blow molds. I wanted to see... They pay the postage $4.98 for the tallest figure. What? <laughs> Artificial Christmas tree. Oh my goodness. Sold by mail only by wards. We even have the tree stand. We've got the Noma lights over here. Only $1.59 for the one. $2.79. 12 ornaments for $0.39. Cents. Honeycomb there. We've got a few more toys. Obviously bicycles here. But again, you guys, the catalog is just chock full and we do have some full color. Again, these are drawn images or illustrated images. Just going to leap through it really quickly. When I get to this color, look at those, those rugs. Those are beautiful. All right, guys. Well, now we're going to finally conclude the video. Here we go. Check it out too. Um, I just, I'm really excited by that. So I hope that you guys did have a good time today. I, of course, appreciate you coming along with me. And remember, guys, until next time, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.